Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I have something really cool to show you. This train, despite experiencing friction, will never stop. This is not because I put a secret chain lift in it or some boosters or something. This is just a normal track and a normal train with normal friction and yet the train just won't lose any speed. If I close the ride and retest it, you can see that the train slowly gains speed until it reaches the point where the amount of speed it gains every time it goes around the track is equal to the amount of speed that it loses every time it goes around the track due to friction. With this 6 car train the top speed it will reach is 106 km per hour, which is quite a bit faster than the 67 km per hour that we launched the train at. So, how does this work? Well, I don't exactly know. I do know that the culprit for the extra energy is the corkscrew element. Me and someone called Zwaardbij did some experiments and we found out that when a coaster goes down a half corkscrew element, it gains more speed than it should, and when it goes up a half corkscrew element, it loses more speed than it should. My guess is that something in the calculation of the vertical position of the train goes wrong when it's going through a corkscrew, resulting in somehow getting extra speed, but I could be wrong entirely. If you have a better guess than me why this happens, please let me know in the comments. The fact that the train also loses some speed when going up a corkscrew means that the setup for a perpetual motion machine will only work with a half loop, barrel roll or inline twist leading into the downwards corkscrew, but not with an upwards corkscrew leading into the downwards corkscrew for just a full corkscrew element. The flying coaster is unique in that it can be upside down for longer stretches of track, so it doesn't need another element leading into the corkscrew or leading out of the corkscrew immediately. However, you do still need to twist it back another 180 degrees somewhere if you want to turn it into an infinite loop of track. There are some fun things that you can do with this behavior. For example, you can make a lift hill that doesn't use a chain lift. This coaster climbs 20 meters without using a launch, chain lift or boosters of any kind. It takes forever and it's horribly inefficient, but it does work. Another use is for creating coasters that have to take a certain element multiple times before they can move on. This corkscrew coaster has to go through the sidewinder three times before it has enough speed to clear the hill and finish the track. There are also instances where a train mysteriously gains speed that do not involve a corkscrew. This setup was discovered by Stu. The light blue track piece is the only chain lift piece on the coaster and as you can see, the train is too short to reach it. However, after it goes back and forth twice, it suddenly does have enough speed to reach it and complete the circuit. I once again have no idea how this works, but it is cool. And that was it for this video. If you know any other setups that gain speed like this, please let me know in the comments. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.